welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the vlog and as you can see we are back at Beamish this time for the opening of the 1950s town it doesn't officially open till half 11 so we're gonna have a wander around it's now quarter past 10 and uh, yeah get there for the half 11 opening <laughs> We're going to head down have a look at the, the 1950s street now. The shops there aren't open yet, they don't open until half 11 and it is only 5 to 11 at the minute. The houses haven't opened yet, that's the next stage. Um, and of course we'll come down and go through the houses when they do open with you guys. But at the minute it is just the shops and uh, we'll have a quick look around before the official opening. And we've just been given an official opening newspaper. right for them then we haven't done it right so when we opened the doors and let them come in and I was listening to their stories and some of them didn't want to leave the exhibits on Saturday we were like you can go home now but they didn't want to leave because they were having such a lovely time in there reminiscing we were all listening to the stories that they were sharing because those stories are the rich stories which we as engagers and the folks who work in our exhibits can use when we open these doors to all of you and all of you flood in and hear these wonderful tales of what it was like to have been working and living here in the 1950s. So here at Beamish, and where I'm standing up on this lovely stage, I can just see over this fence behind you, and I can see the emerging 1950s town, which looks absolutely fantastic. And to have this part open first, yes, we opened the welfare hall, and that's pretty some of you will have been to see that already. But this, war, this terrace 
for us at Beamish is a major milestone for us uh, to move this project forward, funded by the lottery, funded by our trust, trusts and foundations, and funded by you and supported by you. And we couldn't have done this without all of you. You here today just really makes it for us. And I'm looking around, I can see some faces who I've met over the last week, and it's lovely to see you all. Absolutely brilliant. So thank you for your support. I'm going to hand over to our Chair of Trustees, Councillor John Paul Stevenson now, who's going to say a few words. So I'm just going to pass him this, and we'll crack on. Thank you very much, Ron. Uh, it, is, it is chilly, so I promise I won't keep you too long. Um, thank you very much to Rhiannon and all of the staff and volunteers here at Beamish who have made this happen. Um, it's, I'm utterly proud as punch. Close as my mouth, that better? I can hear some feedback. Technology. 1950s technology. I'm proud as punch to be here. There's so much work that's gone into this uh, terrace and I hope you agree. It, it looks amazing, it looks fantastic. This couldn't have happened without the efforts and talents of a lot of people in the Beamish family. There's the researchers, the design and collection teams, the building and construction teams, costume and food. The important bit, the food. You'll get your chips shortly, don't worry. And our volunteers are the friends of Beamish. And so much more, the list goes on. Uh, we are really a family here at Beamish, and everyone has really pulled together to make this happen. Big thanks must also go to the National Lottery Heritage Fund, without whom this project could not have happened. The funding has been instrumental to us, uh, and thanks also to players of the National Lottery. But it's not just the money, although the money is important, uh, but they've given us so much support as this project develops. They've believed in us in every step of the way, given us support, given us advice and guidance, particularly thanks to Iva, who you know has been at our side um, and has been you know has given us so much support. It's so so valued. But the biggest thank you, the biggest thank you goes to the families, the families associated with these businesses and homes behind us for allowing us to tell their stories um, and we hope many people think this is great but ultimately our biggest hope is that the families themselves feel that you've done we've done our so we've done your memories your stories justice your stories will live on and they will create new memories, memories for the millions of visitors who will come to Beamish from around the world for the decades to come. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Stevenson. Now, let's get on with this exciting morning. I'm going to hand back to Matthew before I start singing or doing karaoke, because that wouldn't be bad. I'm going to hand back to Matthew now. There we go. Thank you very much. Uh, so we are live on Facebook across the UK and around the world. So let's have a big cheer, everyone. There we go. And what we're going to do now is, because we're on Facebook, we want to make sure everyone here knows what's going on and everyone at home. So I'm going to walk along. We're going to start at the hairdressers and we're going to meet each person that once you guys have done the countdown, I'm going to open these doors and we're going to bring history to life. This is a huge day for us all at the museum. So we're going to start off here at Elizabeth's Hair Salon. Uh, and I think we have the lady herself. Um, do you want to just move a little bit closer to me? There we go. Hello. And do you want to introduce yourself? I'm Elizabeth McPherson. Uh, and so this is your shop? I own this salon for 37 years. Oh. Gosh, so we got a, gosh, a, a gasp there. Should we have a gasp? Oh. There we go. <laughs> a celebrity this morning. Uh, so how does it feel to be here then? After all this time, I presume you've been involved for a long time, getting to this moment. It's an honour, really, to be, you know, to be here. Like my shop, to be created here. That's really, really special. And to have your name above the shop, I might not speak. It's just the icing on the cake. 
thank you for letting us tell your story and there'll be millions of people will hear your story for many years to come so uh, in a moment you're going to be by the door aren't you after we've done the countdown you go open that door and welcome the first visitors in Brilliant, right? Okay, we'll head to the next one then. Uh, so there's a gentleman waiting here for us outside Norman Cornish's house. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself, sir? Hello, I'm John Cornish. Hello. Brilliant. So was Norman a relative of yours? Well, yes. Um, I was born up there. Um, and this small home was a, um, had a family of four. Um, my father, Norman Cornish, his wife, Sarah, my sister, Anne, and myself. We had a lovely, uncomplicated childhood here. That must feel incredible then, to see it here. Does it feel strange? Of course, it's, it's very, very strange to be able to walk through over a threshold and see um, an exact replica of your childhood. It's very surreal. And, and millions of people are going to come into your house. Yes, we're absolutely chuffed about that, yes. Get the kettle on, someone just shouted. I'm sure we can do that. Um, how would your dad feel then? Uh, I think you'd be pleased in the fact that the museum is am amazing in being able, to tell s and being able to tell stories with the houses, the contents, the engages, they're very, very good at telling stories. And I think my father's work told a story about a mining community in the mid 20th century, um, like a window into the world of, of this this period of time. And so I think it's a, it's a great match the fact that people can come and see the story of my father and then go on and see um, the story of the community through his artwork. That's perfect a brilliant fit for us so thank you for everything you've done for us and you're going to be opening the door for us after the countdown? Yes indeed. Brilliant right we've got two of the four then so we should head to the next one we're going to head to John's Cafe now. Hi, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes my name is Maria Ebelwhite I was power seller before I was managed. Oh wow, so um, do you want to explain your connection then to, to John? This is my dad's cafe. So your dad's cafe, it must feel amazing does it to be here? It does, yes, yes, it's very, very emotional time. This was our cafe and this was also our home. And how do you feel, you, do you, how would your dad feel? I think he would have been very proud of today, especially to see so many people here um, and to see the cafe going to be so busy again. That's perfect, yeah, so we're going to have millions of people through, and as well as everyone here, we've got everyone at home as well, so I'm sure the people that you know, you can give them a little wave there, um, live, I'm sure Wingate are watching, so are you ready to open the door in a moment? I certainly am, with pleasure. Brilliant, well thank you for everything you've done, so we've done three, we should do the final one then, and uh, we'll see who we've got to open the door here, uh, I think we have our Chief Fryer to open the door here, yeah. would you like to introduce yourself? Pardon? Do you like to introduce yourself? I'm Jim, uh, Jim Musgrove, fryer at Middleton's Quality Fried Fish and Chips. Brilliant. So I think what we'll do then is maybe there's someone in this crowd that would like to open the door with Jim. The people that are here are, are as much involved as everyone else. You, you make our museum. So the first person that I see that put their hand up can come and open it with, jo with Jim. There we go. There's a gentleman there. Do you want to drag your family through as well? Okay, so then Jim will be opening the door and our other very special guests. So I'll hand you back to Rhiannon in a moment because I think we're going to do a big countdown to do this. Uh, but let's get this gentleman and his family here. Thank you. This wasn't set up, was it? No, no, not at all. <laughs> Brilliant, right. So you're going to open the door with Jim. We've got our other three people ready. All the crowd, are you ready? Yes! That doesn't sound very ready. Are you ready? Yes! Brilliant. Everyone at home, if you're ready, click that like button and we'll, we'll see that afterwards. Uh, I'm going to hand you over to Rihanna now for the countdown. Thank you, Matthew, our anchor man. Right, everybody, get your voices ready really loud. Okay, are we ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Well, there you have it. That is the 1950s um, street open. Obviously, the town which is behind me isn't open yet. That's not finished. But we're now in line to get fish and chips. Thank 
Just what do you think of the fish and chips, Emma? <laughs> That's what she thinks of the fish and chips. And I've already finished mine. I thought the fish and chips were fine at Dabby Dozy. They don't serve ketchup at the fish and chip shops in Beamish, so you have to bring your own. And I already remembered that, so I had my own ketchup. Whoop whoop. Ketchup soup. Yeah. No. Luckily, we were one of the first in the queue because um, um, that's the queue for the fish and chips now. Well, I had to get an ice cream sundae, and this is officially the first ice cream sundae to be served in the 1950s shop on opening day. Whoop whoop, chicken soup. Everybody was taking photographs of it. Hey! hey. Emma's got a tea and a rose lemonade. Because Emma's cold. Next, we've got some. Oh, it's a focus. It's on your face. That's better. Some rose lemonade by Fedman's. Nice. <laughs> it is actually nice. Very rosy. Okay. I think I'm being followed. That was the 1950s street. We'll be back down once the rest of the town's open and uh, we'll take you through the houses. But right now we're gonna go and get the transportation back to the entrance and exit. Well folks, that's all from Beamish today. Please hit like, please hit subscribe and consider sharing this to your friends and family. See you all tomorrow. And now it's time to do your job, and she's too tired to see it.